Hello, Flames Nation. This is another edition of Classy's Corner, our inaugural video edition coming from you live from our indoor practice facility. Our first guest, or I should say guinea pig, would be head men's soccer coach, Sean Phillips. What we're trying to do is bring you in closer to our department in the inner workings and get to know our coaches, our student athletes, our players, our facilities, you name it, as people. And it's very exciting because here at Flames Nation, we're trying to uh, really develop a culture, a family atmosphere. And so all of you watching this are part of our family. We want to bring you closer into our living rooms. So coach, and we're going to start with some informal questions okay. here. So talk about a little bit, you know, we're here in the indoor practice facility. And of course we had six inches of snow yesterday and the temperature outside, I think is feels like below zero. At least that's what uh, my thermometer said on the way in. What does this mean to your guys that have a facility like this to practice during the off season? It's, it's invaluable. Um, I don't think it's coincidence that since this facility is opened, uh, it opened in the winter of 15 for us. We won a regular season championship in 15, and we've won two Horizon League tournament championships since that time. It's not a coincidence. Uh, we're able to come in and train 7v7, 8v8. Um, yeah. It's a good surface. We're able to continue to work on everything we want to work on, and it's not a hardwood floor. It's not bouncy. It's smooth. It's uh, weather neutral. We're able to get in and not have to worry about the elements unless we choose to go out and do the elements. Sure, absolutely. And you know, that's probably part of it. You want to be on the elements sometime. You know, is it a, is it a toughness factor? Is it playing in the conditions, playing in the elements? What, you know, what, how do you make that decision? Uh, a lot of times it's what we want to work on. This morning, first day out, um, one of the keys to being a championship team is having grit and yeah. uh, championship games in this part of the country are played in adverse weather conditions. So our first session Back as a team today was outside in the snow with 100-yard uh, 100 yard, 100 yard runs to get the guys sure. going. Well, what about, so you got to answer this for me. Mm -hmm. So my understanding is that during the regular season, you use a different soccer ball than you use in the NCAA tournament. What's the reasoning behind that? Why, why does the NCAA do that? Um, the NCAA claims that uh, they they want to have a great ball for our, for our championship experience. There's... Yep. A little question as to if that's the best ball or not, but one sure. of the great things is if you're using that ball, that means you're playing in the time of year you're playing at. Yeah. And and the best thing is, is is now that we've been involved two years, we've got a few bags of those balls, and it's always a constant reminder of the guys of where we want to go. Sure, absolutely. Well, the exciting part is is that your guys have used those balls the last yes. couple of years. And I know early in the year, you know, off to a little bit of a slow start, you know, one five and one's start, and I know. You know, you had a lot of uh, transition with players coming in and out like that. What can you attribute the the twelve game unbeaten streak and how you turned around and how you're able to win conference? Well, I think the coaches finally figured out what was going right. The players, the players <laughs> yeah. kept working. They kept yeah. working, and you know, players win games, coaches lose games, yeah. and referees ruin games. Sure. <laughs> and I think in that one five and one, there was a little bit of the second and the third. Um, going on uh but but in, in all seriousness we, we added 15 players into our team from the end of last at the end of fall of 16 yeah uh through the start of the fall of 17 yeah and it took our leadership a little while to sort out um, yeah it took a lot of these new players to to get things going we had some injuries uh to key players and over the course of the season the guys stayed together and, and kept believing in each other and fighting for each other and even in that stretch when we were one five and one nobody lost faith that we had the ability to win a Horizon League championship, yep. and, and that's really what, what kept it going for us. I mean, your team really epitomizes what we want here. They, they're blue collar, they work hard, they're excellent in the classroom, amazing on the community service aspect, and they obviously win championships, which is important. Now, a little bit about you personally. Mm -hmm. So obviously, your wife is part of the UIC family, working in development, yes. and your, your two boys, they're at everything, not just soccer games, yes. they love this place. So what's your favorite thing to do with the family in the off chance you actually have some free time on a weekend? More times than not, as you said, you'll see us here. Yeah. Um, we've been fortunate. My wife started working at UIC in April of 06. Mm -hmm. I started working here in February of 05, and it's, it's been a constant for us. Uh, our two boys were born while we worked here. Um, we got married. I took the job here, and then I got married two weeks later, and she came up six months later. So, okay. my entire family component has been in and around UIC. And when we talk about the UIC family, it it really exists. And and you know whether it's anywhere across campus, here in the athletic department, mm -hmm. uh, my two boys can't imagine being anywhere else. And that's and that's great to know. 
They bring the energy, that's for sure. Yes. Making signs every game, <laughs> running around. In fact, they don't even need a credential at the games. They come running on the field. They know this is, hey, this is their house. I love it. Well, I, I go to the basketball games now. If one of the boys isn't there, the security guards start asking where, <laughs> yeah, where my kids are and what's the matter with, with the Smart world. Smart move so, on your point. So, what, yeah. What about, so you've been in Chicago six years now, you say? Uh, 15. 15 years. So you got to have a favorite pizza place. Yes. Yeah, there's a place down um, in Bucktown where I live called Stop Along. Stop and along. it is a uh, See, new viewers are going to, is this a, a locals yes, place? Yes, it's, okay. it's, it's a local one-off. Um, growing up in the in the 80s and early 90s, they, it's a very themed restaurant like that. The pizza's great, thin crust, and um, which I know isn't exactly Chicago, but he actually has Galaga, Defender, some of the wow. video games. Guys my age, y'all grew up playing yeah and uh now it's a competition between myself and my two boys on who's the best galaga player wow that's amazing yeah i like the old school video games but we're kind of dating ourselves talking yes about of galaga, course but, but you know <laughs> but that's part of better get some off their playstations and xboxes yes. once in a while and understand how we grew up what about favorite museum place to take the family on the weekend other than uic sporting one, inside, uh, one of the best things about living in chicago you know, we talk about uic and and campus life the, the campus life is is the city and one of the best educational pieces, not just for, for our, our family, but also I think for the student athletes and the students here on campus is the Museum of Science and Industry. Yeah. We're annual members to yeah, that, sure. the Shedd Aquarium. Um, and we go probably once a month to the Museum of Science and Industry. My two boys love it and actually we're, we're going there on Sunday. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing that you know we, as administrators and coaches mm -hmm. at UIC, we want our student athletes and our prospective student athletes to take advantage of the great things that the city has to offer. Myself, being in college towns for so many, many years of my career, you know, we didn't have access to those types of things. So to be in an urban environment where we can have access to the museums, to the professional sports teams, the unbelievable food, as we go further along here, you'll understand my love for food, <laughs> but I, it's incredible. You just really gotta take advantage of the city. One last question that I think would be catered towards young people. There's okay. so much talk in sports right now that, you know, uh, youth, children should specialize in one sport. And, you know, I, you know, I'm a personal believer that I think, you know, of course I grew up in a small town, so you got to, you had access to a lot of sports. What's your personal thought? Do you, do you like student athletes to specialize in one sport? Or do you like them to be multi-sport athletes? I, I think it, it, it varies student athlete to student athlete. Um, and, Personally speaking, I played multiple sports through my freshman year of high school. Mm -hmm. And then at that point for me, that was the right time to focus on, on soccer. Um, my two boys play baseball, basketball, soccer. Um, and if they want to do it, we, we let them try it. The sports yeah. science is showing that for a lot of people, it's, it's good not just for long-term health, but also really for, for multiple for multiple other reasons in the f sport you finally choose. Absolutely. Dirk Nowitzki, a, I'm a Dallas Mavericks season ticket holder since they started. Yep. They, he played soccer. You look at the flip side, Steve Nash played soccer. Yep. Kobe Bryant played soccer. So all of these American sports stars, then you flip and you look at some of the, the soccer players that have done well. Jay Demerit, our own UIC yeah, flame. Absolutely. He was a three-sport athlete all the way through high school. Yep. Uh, and that obviously worked for him to become a starter and, and captain of the U.S. national team. So for me, it, I don't think there's a blanket solution. Yep. Everybody needs to find their own path. But the sports science is showing that multiple sport athletes up to a certain age can work and does work both Absolutely. short term and long term. Well, great. The fun part of Classy's Corner is that when we have these video series, we want to do a coaches, player, student athlete challenge. So today, Coach Phillips and I are going to do a penalty kick challenge with, with a much smaller goal. Uh, I have actually, in spirit of uh, full disclosure here, soccer was not my sport of choice growing up. I was a football, basketball, and baseball player. But my wife's going to kill me if I don't make at least one since she played soccer her entire life. So here we go. We're going to do a best out of three. Coach, tell me, how do you pick the player that you want to take a penalty kick? I have my choice of guys, Yeah. but ultimately, since it's such a pressure-packed situation, all the pressure in those scenarios is on the kicker. I let the guys pick. Okay. We, well, have, we have a group of three guys that we assign at the start of every game. The substitutions, one may or may not be in. Yeah. But we sit there and we say, guys, you, you're the three that we, that we want to take it. In that moment, whoever's feeling it, 
grab the ball and take it, and then win trust the player. Well, my goal after today is they're, they're going to pick me. I got some eligibility left, so Perfect. here we go. Ow! <laughs> Best out of three, you're up, coach. No pressure. Don't beat the boss. Ow, one nil, one nil. Feeling good here. That ball's kind of distracting me there. We got to clear the goal. No, 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 no. Ah! Here we go. Noonan, Noonan. Oh, doesn't look like I'm going to win this one. I just want to make this, this one. one that might be it. That might help me get the ball in, coach. Ricochet it in. There we go. All right. Since you already won. How? Well, my future is definitely not in soccer. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is the first video edition of Classy's Corner. Fire up, Flames.